fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. During the critical early years in the development of the West, the rapid transmission of news helped link together vast areas with common bonds of business, politics, and national defense. When the telegraph system was built as far west as St. Joseph, Missouri, and with the advent of the Pony Express from Missouri to California, the time required to send a message across the continent was cut to the almost unbelievably short span of 10 days. Messages destined for points along the route were dropped off at the relay stations to be picked up by other messengers sent by those waiting to receive them. Here, to unscrupulous people, was an opportunity to exploit a position of trust and responsibility for their own selfish and criminal ends. Well, no sign of yet. Guess I must be early again. Funny how you always happen in just as we're ready to eat lunch. Shucks, ma'am. Long as you keep inviting me to eat with you while I'm waiting, I ain't one to turn you down. What are we having? Well, to start with, mock turtle soup, bavec croutons. Huh? Croutons, they're little squares of toasted bread. Oh. Of course, that's after the pot de foie gras and salad with French dressing, filet mignon with sauce bernet, French fried potatoes. Oh, I couldn't stand all that, ma'am. How about some plain old pork and beans? That's what I thought you'd say, so I threw the other out. Sit down, Jim. I hear him coming now. Just when I'm a getting started. You sit right there and eat, Jim. I'll see if he's got anything for you. Anything for me today? Yeah, something for the army. Give it to me. The messenger's inside. About the fort, Jim. What's been going on? Hey, Matt coming in? Oh, you know him. He he likes to walk the horse a bit till it cools off. Well, you remember the Colonel's wife I was telling you about the other day? Yes. Well, I heard something about her that I don't know whether I ought to tell you or not. Oh, I'll go on. Oh, why do you say that? Tell you another time. I got to be getting. Oh, Jim, won't you have some more coffee? Thanks, I've had enough. Well, uh, why don't you have lunch with us tomorrow? Matt's promised to bring me some venison. You know, food like that is really living. <laughs> Goodbye, Jim. Good luck. So long, then. Oh, Jim. Messenger left this way. Thanks, Matt. You know, you're a lucky man. That missus of yours sure can cook. <laughs> Good luck, Jim. So long, Matt. Well? Nothing but soldiers transfers. I was afraid of that. Well, what'd you expect? I don't know. Something. Anything that filthy Indian would pay for. Sarah. Yes? We got enough right now to buy a good-sized ranch. A ranch? Sure. We'll put a couple of hundred head of cattle on it, plant some wheat, and, and the ranch house will fix it up the way you want. And eat dirt and talk to myself all day? Oh, honey. Oh, I remember what you said before we were married. You'll love the West, you said. The land, the cattle, the people. And what do you want? I want to go to New York. Live in style. High style. Oh, but that takes a lot of money. And we can't keep this up much longer. If they find out we've been tampering with the mails, why, we'll both be in a lot of trouble. They're not going to. Yellow Eye's making a lot of more trouble than I thought he could. That's his business. Ours is to make Yellow Eye pay us plenty. You better get up there and see him now. I got nothing to tell him. Stall him. Tell him we'll have something in a couple of days. And if we really do find something, it'll be the last time. Oh, good. White man's soldiers move soon. 
Some move north, some east. Scout party's looking for Yellow Eye. Coming closer. Soon Yellow Eye must move. They plan to trap Yellow Eye. You speak nothing. Speak when? Where? It's hard to say right now. They may change their plans. What plan? Their plan to trap Yellow Eye. You speak words, but say nothing. Soon you'll know even more. Now. Must have more time for my medicine. Steel paper talk. That your medicine. My medicine's been very good for you. Yellow Eye, just another Cheyenne brave without knowing what I tell him. I've been very helpful to Yellow Eye. I can continue to be so. White man lie. Paper talk from Fast Pony bring medicine. After sunrise, go. Wait for Fast Pony. Bring paper talk here. That night, at a military headquarters near St. Joe, Missouri, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were asked to call on the commanding officer. Twin Forks, Canoga, two weeks later in Dead City. Then 200 miles west to Boonville. We missed him every time. Or he missed you. What do you mean? Well, these marks indicate the position of your troops, do they not? Yes. Yellow Eye seems to have anticipated your moves. Look at your time schedule. He attacked Dead City when a unit of troops was at Canoga. He attacked Boonville just after a company of cavalry were ordered out. What are you getting at? Maybe Yellow Eye has many eyes. Tonto means that the Cheyenne have a very good spy system. If they have, I'd like to see it. All troops have been thoroughly investigated without finding a scrap of proof that spies have been operating anywhere near us. Maybe Yellow Eye has a higher sources of information. You're not suggesting the War Department. The War Department is almost 2,000 miles away from your troops, General. I see. Where we start, Commissary? as close as possible to Yellow Eye's headquarters. That's dangerous work for just two of you. Good luck. Thank you, General. After breaking camp the next morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto pressed on toward the west, coming ever closer to Indian-infested territory. No sign of Cheyenne, Kimisari. Well, if Yellow Eye was getting his information from the field, we would have seen something of his scouts by now. What do you think he'd do? Let's go. Cheyenne? He was too far away, Tonto. Him hurt bad, Kimisari. Does he know why they attacked him? They... They never bothered us before. They were after the messages in your dispatch pouch. Do you have any idea what's in them? No. Who... Who are you? Him think you outlaw. Don't worry about this mask. I want to help you. Headed for St. Joe. Take... Take the dispatch pouch? Where? Dry... Dry Creek. Dry Creek, not far. I'll take it there right away. Now we take you there, too. It's too late, Tonto. He's dead. Let me dig grave here while you go Dry Creek. I'll take his personal effects with me. Stop it, Matt. You're driving me crazy. He should have been here an hour ago. Well, that'll not bring him any sooner. Yellow Eye's suspicious. Is he? Well, that must be the rider now. It's somebody wearing a mask. He's carrying the dispatch pouch. Let him in. Come in. Oh, hello, ma'am. I'm holding right there, stranger. 
you think I'm an outlaw, you're mistaken. Sure, cowboys ride around all the time wearing masks. Get the pouch. Keep your hands away from your guns. Now, where's our rider? I have his personal effects here. He was ambushed a few miles back. Ambushed? By whom? Two Cheyenne Indians. After he fell, one of the Cheyenne tried to make off with the dispatch pouch. You sure? I chased him until he dropped it. Crazy Indian. You sound as though you know him. No, I, I just said he was crazy, that's all. They keep pulling this in our riders all the time. Besides, how do you know you're not lying? Maybe you killed him. If I did, would I have brought that? Did you take anything? No. So you brought it for the reward. I was trying to help. Well, I'll tell them when I take it to St. Joe, but I don't think they'll turn the reward over to a masked man. Now get going. As you say. That crazy yellow eye. If he ever tries to stop a rider again, he'll have every soldier in the territory up here gunning for him. What makes you think they'll not be here anyway? Because I'll tell St. Joe a different story. What about him? Oh, he'll keep his mouth shut. He's an outlaw himself. I'm not so sure. Oh, forget about him. Good evening, General. Good evening, Mr. Brown. Came over just as soon as I got your message. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Smoke? No, thanks. What seems to be the trouble? Something has come up that may concern your Pony Express office here at St. Joseph. Oh. Just what is it? I don't know the details myself yet, but, uh, but I'll let my friends here explain. A mask man? This is Mr. Brown, General Manager of the Pony Express office. I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you, General. Does this mean anything to you, Mr. Brown? A silver bullet? You must be the Lone Ranger, and you're Tonto. I can vouch for them. Yes, I'm sure you can. I'll be brief, gentlemen. I have reason to suspect that Yellow Eye has access to the news being carried by the Pony Express. What? Oh, that's impossible. On what evidence? The day before yesterday, Tonto and I broke up an attack on a Pony Express rider by two Cheyenne Indians. The rider died of his wounds. I took the mail on into the Dry Creek Relay Station. You? Well, I knew about the rider, but our agent didn't report anything about Cheyenne Indians or a masked man. Kimasabi speak truth. Very interesting, Mr. Brown, alongside of other information that I have. Go on, go on. When I told the agent about what had happened, he acted as though he'd been betrayed. Then to cover up, he claimed that the Cheyenne were constantly attacking your riders. Well, that's not true. This is the first thing that's happened like this in months. When I was leaving the station, I found these on the ground near the corral. What are they? Bits of sealing wax. Is that the same kind of sealing wax your company uses, Mr. Brown? Yes. What for? We use it for sealing special government communications. Just what are you trying to say? That it's possible for the Dry Creek agent to open the mail, examine the contents, and replace it, and then pass on to Yellow Eye whatever military information he might find. But the packets are sealed right in our office. And in addition to the sealing wax, we use a special seal that's kept right in the office. Very true, Mr. Brown. But the Dry Creek agent may have been able to copy your seal. But our employees are, are hand-picked. They're loyal, honest men. It's hard to believe that we've made a mistake. Don't blame yourself, Brown. There are many reasons why an honest man might turn crook. But how are we going to prove he is? I have a plan, gentlemen. Send a false message by the writer in the morning concerning, say, the relocation of troops in the territory. And if the agent tries to contact Yellow Eye, trap him. I'd suggest you let him make the contact, General. Why? By giving Yellow Eye misleading information, you may be able to lay a trap for him, too. Good thinking. Excellent. Do we have your cooperation, Brown? No, oh, of course. Except for our other loyal employees, I, I hope you're mistaken. Well, we'll soon know. Meanwhile, Tonto and I will trail the rider as far as we can. How's it going? I'm not sure. I think I'm being followed. Followed? By whom? 
This may sound crazy, but a while back I thought I saw a masked man riding a white horse. So long. Watch him, Tonto. Now's his chance. Him walk over the doorway. Look, him talk to wife at door. He's probably making sure the army messenger's being taken care of. You suspect right man, Kimsami. Judging from the way he works, he's been doing this for a long time. Too bad messenger never look out window. Real news this time. What is it? They're moving the army units to the fort back east. When? Day after tomorrow. Their route takes them through the canyon just north of here. Oh, is that so? Don't you see? Yellow Eye can wait till they're halfway through, hit them at both ends and wipe them out. Matt. I'll make him pay 5,000 gold for this. Matt, listen, it's too easy. Then we can quit him. What did you say? Matt, it, it may be a trap. I'm sure of it. What are you talking about? The pony rider told you he saw that masked man. He could have been mistaken. I'm not so sure of that. Why would the masked man follow the pony rider? I don't know, but if he followed the rider here, he's probably been watching you outside. There's no one outside. Oh, think, Matt. Suppose he's trying to find out if you're helping Yellow Eye. Suppose he had the company send that letter and then plan to watch to see what you'd do. I'll go on up to Yellow Eye just the way we planned. And get caught? Well, the company might have sent that letter to see what I'd do, but... On the other hand, it might be a trap to draw Yellow Eye to the canyon where the army would be waiting for him. In any case, they'll, they'll want Yellow Eye to get the message. So I doubt if they'll stop me on the way up. What about when you're coming back? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. He's taking a long time. Maybe him not believe message. There he is. Follow him, Tato. See where he goes. I'll meet you at the relay station later. Uh -huh. Satisfied he had destroyed his unwelcome follower, Matt continued a short distance up the trail where he found his horse and continued to his meeting with Yellow Eye. Matt had been gone for some time when the Lone Ranger, according to plan, arrived at the relay station. Looking for someone, Mrs. Yancey? He should be back soon. You? What do you want? The man who's been selling secret information to the Cheyenne. I don't know what you're talking about. You had to be in on it too, Mrs. Yancey. Why did you do it? All right, I'll tell you. Stay here. Your husband should return soon. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. A short time later, Tonto regained consciousness and saw that he was only slightly wounded. Meanwhile, Matt was returning to the relay station by another trail. As he arrived at his destination, he suddenly noticed a great white horse hidden behind the cabin. Tano, that was close. Him like to shoot from ambush, Kimasabi. He wait for me on trail to Yellow Eye. You're hurt. Only flesh wound. I thought I fixed him for good. You fool, why didn't you make sure? You're all through now, Yancey. And so is Yellow Eye. You're wrong there, stranger. What do you mean? Yellow Eye's already pulling out to ambush the troops before they can ambush him. We guessed that message was planned to lead Yellow Eye into a trap. Now it's the troops that'll be trapped. Maybe it isn't. He must be planning to attack the troops at the pass between here and headquarters. But headquarters many hours ride from here, Kimasabi. And once Yellow Eye's taken care of the soldiers, he'll never let you take us in. Tano, do you feel strong enough to bring them in alone? Ah, uh, me do. Good. Keep them covered while I tie their hands. Then what you do? I'm going on and try to warn General Morgan in time. 
You'll never make it. Maybe not, but I've got to try. Well, time to get the troops assembled. If your masked friend's suspicions are correct, Yellow Eye should be on the move by now. We'll intercept him just as the Redskins are getting into position above the pass. If there is a traitor in our company, I can only hope he meets the same fate you planned for Yellow Eye. Our masked friend will see that he's brought to justice. I'm sure of that. Good luck, General. We've the masked man to thank for this. Come in. What are you doing here? You were a dry crick. I left there three hours ago, General. You must change your method of attack. Yellow Eye knows of our plan. Here they are, Kimisabi. Well, Mr. Brown, I'm awfully sorry. Anything you have to say, you can say to General Morgan. You too late, Kimisabi? No, Tato. I got here in time to tell the General what happened. Him change plan? Yes, he left here with his troops hours ago. We should have some news from him soon. He planned on contacting the Cheyenne just before sundown. We made it, gentlemen. Captured Yellow Eye and destroyed almost his entire force. Congratulations, General. I'll second that, sir. Pioneers and wagon trains move again soon. Yes, they will, Tonto. A traitor's, eh? Well, this time your treason gave the enemy no aid or comfort. But with the aid of the masked man and his Indian friend, the integrity of the Pony Express has been restored. They're gone. That masked man, does he have a name? He certainly has. He's the Lone Ranger. Oh, Silver! 